Amen. It's been a long time. We. <laughs> We miss everyone here, and um, we trust that the Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. Amen. You may be seated. Father, we thank you tonight. We give you praise. We honor your name. And we ask that you open the scriptures to us and cause us to find understanding in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right, turn to Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 4. We'll do Bible study for um, a few moments. And um, we'll check to see if it's God's will for his spirit to do one or two things. But we are here for the weekend, so um, just follow the progression. The Lord bless you in Jesus' mighty name. I was wondering where that sound. In fact, I thought we were under attack at the moment. Amen, hallelujah. All right, so let's do Acts chapter 4, beginning from verse number 15. Acts chapter 4, beginning from verse number 15. So I salute you once again. God bless you in Jesus' mighty name. So we are an apostolic company. Part of what God has called us to do is to re-pioneer the apostolic perspective. And as a member of the household, I would like you to understand that the textbook for our operations happens to be the book of Acts of the Apostles. So for us, we monopolize this book. This is where our practice and procedure manual is fetched from. And I hope subsequently to have a few more days with you so that we can fully imbibe the apostolic culture that was crystallized in the book of Acts. Part of what we're going to discuss today uh, is still attempting to entrench um, the mentality of the apostolic. The mentality of the apostolic. Don't be tempted to increase my volume. Just leave it the way it is. And the word apostolos in the Greek language means a sent one. And in order for you to be a sent one, you must have a mentality of the sent. You see, for instance, if someone is sent, maybe the person is initiated into witchcraft, initiated into a marine court, God forbid, but and uh, in that court they said the, our problem is Isaac or Dame. The one that is sent to tackle Isaac must look for how to operate in the context of his vicinity. Are you there? So if he is preoccupied by ministry things, that sent one is going to be in the ministry space where he operates, looking for an opportunity to take advantage. No one can be as wise as a sent one, especially if the person keeps the focus of his mandate as fortified as an enclave might be because the person is possessed with a sent mentality, the person will begin to see the weaknesses that are in the system that can be exploited in order to achieve the mission for which he or she was sent. Are you with me? If we operate with a sent mentality, it will be easy for us to be able to infiltrate even the highest locus of satanic citadels 
and implement the policies of God. But unfortunately, the average believer no longer functions with a sentimentality. And that's why even though we are supposed to be the hunter, in most cases, we play the role of the hunted. There was an orientation that these people had, and obviously, it was drawn from the lecture that Jesus gave them in the book of Acts chapter 1. Like I said, when I have time, we'll start from Acts chapter 1, then you'll see the education that Jesus gave them that resulted in their practice. And then in their practice, we'll be able to see some inevitable aspects, some aspects that they could not stop, they could not outsource. You will know that that aspect was part of the things that Jesus taught them. If we collocate all those items together and we begin to operate that way, you begin to see that the same kind of results that those guys had, we are going to have in Ghana. Now, mind you, when you hear, when you read the book of Acts chapter 1 verse 8, for instance, where the Bible says, we shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon us and we shall be witnesses unto Jesus, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea, and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. When you read that scripture, I don't think you meditate on it. Jesus was given a prescription of how the revival should flow, the revival river. It should start from Jerusalem. He was giving shape to the motion of the movement. <coughs> if, I, if, if, if by any means any of you understood how difficult Jerusalem was, in that strategic meeting when Jesus was revealing his intention as to unveiling the pathway of the river of revival, you would have objected uh, because Jerusalem is the heart of Judaism. Judaism is the oldest religion known to man. You don't make converts from Judaism. Judaism makes converts to itself. And that's what the idea of the proselyte is. A proselyte is a convert to Judaism that is not originally born a Jew. And it is to them that the outer court is given. The, 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 the highest place that a proselyte can approach unto in that temple arrangement is the outer court. And the light he will operate with is sunlight. You need to be a Jew to be able to enter into the place where the menorah gives light. You need to be a high priest in order for you to enter into the place where Shekinah glory gives light. You don't make converts of Jews. One of the wonders that supports the fact that Christianity is a religion from heaven. Hmm? There are about 14 wonders. One of them is that Jews form the first caucus of the apostolic enclave. It is impossible. Go check, the, read religion, study religion, find out how many religions have Jews in the epicenter. Then you will now realize how difficult it is for a Jew to stop believing after the way of the mosaic. It's impossible. And Jesus was saying, you guys are going to start from where? From Jerusalem. And that's, that's, that's practically impossible. The spiritual capital that Jesus was making available with which he believes that we have the capacity to take Jerusalem is the Holy Ghost. That means Jesus knows a little about the Holy Ghost much more than we do. Because in the face of impossibility, he was speaking about a possibility that could only be possible because the spirit is involved. Are you with me? Now, so... When we study the book of Acts, we are, we are studying it not just as a storyline, but the book of practice and procedure. Because it's supposed to guide our operations in accurate apostolic service delivery. Turn with me to the book of Acts chapter 4 verse 15. But, are you there in 15? No, let me... Let's do from verse 15. When they had commanded them to go aside of the council, 
They conferred among themselves, saying, What shall we do to this man? For that indeed a notable miracle had been done by them is manifest to all them that dwell in Jerusalem, and we cannot deny it. It's the same Jerusalem. You are seeing the, there is a system that is built into that civilization that is designed to resist change. There are layers of that system, but it's the pinnacle of the system. The Jewish ruling council, it's like um, a conclave from when they are, whence the ideologies that prosper in society are forged. This is the wisdom center from whence the policies that thrive in the land find their bearing. If you are a scholar of the Bible, you must have noticed um, a region of Israel called Galilee. Galilee. Have you seen it in your Bible before? If you are a scholar of the Bible, you must have noticed a region of the Bible of, of Israel called Judea. Have you noticed Judea? All right. So it is from Judea that we have Jews, the Jews. The, 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 the terminology Jews is a nickname for people that are from Judea. Now, it happens to be that the enclave and the capital of Judea is Jerusalem. Are you there? Now, we have other parts of Israel, which is not Judea. Those guys are not Jews because they are not from Judea, but they are Israelites. Now, it is the guys that come from Judea that were responsible for the death of Jesus. Because they, thought, they thought that the, the, the rise of Jesus was going to threaten their belief system. And so, they felt it was uh, a service to God to take Jesus out. Now, they have successfully taken Jesus out. And they are beginning to see the, that even after taking him out, he's not out. So there's a serious case here on their hands. And they had to confirm. <laughs> oh my God. So Jesus' fans were the Galileans. They were the guys from Naphtali. The guys from Zabulon. The guys from Reuben. But the Jews were the ones that were the enemy of Jesus. The people that supported Jesus' ministry were Galileans. The headquarters of his operation was in Capernaum. Now, I don't have time to bring a graph and show you how Jesus operated. Don't worry. All right. So, I'm just saying that they thought they killed him and they just discovered he's not yet out of business. So, they had to come and seek wisdom by counsel. Now, there is one thing that is legitimizing their operations, which is the ability to work miracles. And it doesn't matter... When people say they are atheists, they don't believe in Jesus, they don't believe in God, they don't, oh, no problem. They, when they fall sick, they will need help. <laughs> and the Bible reveals that a notable miracle was performed by these people, and even the people trying to manage this philosophy of men in the district could not deny that that miracle was authentic. So the guys, are you there? Where the, the guys were well aware that what the Peter and the rest were preaching was true and that indeed Jesus was who he said he is but it was their sworn duty to ensure that nothing but Judaism prospers and so even though it was an undeniable miracle they had to look for a way to quench the movement yeah go on verse 17 but that is spread no further among the people. So they, they can't deny that the miracle is authentic, but they are matching orders is to ensure that that philosophy doesn't spread any further among the people. See, their, their, their preoccupation is to manage the people's belief system. Their preoccupation is to manage um, the direction of their faith, what their faith is anchored on. Say, we don't mind you doing one or two 
good things. But the problem is the people. And um, would have allowed you to operate, but the people are involved. And uh, that is spread no further among the people. Let us straightly threaten them. That's number one. If you have your Bible, you can underline threaten. That they speak no to no man in this name. That's number two. The name. They, they are using intimidation to ensure that men do not speak against the name. Now listen, are you there with me? Uh, you need to understand that what is going on here is that a principality is taking advantage of the stature of the Jewish ruling council to fight against the spread of Christianity. So you could see the wisdom of the principality dominating the council. Just like in the House of Parliament in Ghana, you might think that the decisions that are reached came from brainstorming. <laughs> you would think that it's a, it's a product of high class, well-researched, balanced positions to bring the greatest advantage in the interest of the nation of Ghana. That's what you think. But unknown to you, there is a prince, a principality that locks in the thoughts and in the hearts of men. And that principality has champions in their midst. You see, when, when members of parliament gather, there, there are one or two of them that actually control that floor. For, it might be for any reason, I don't know, you know, but the, the floor doesn't belong to everybody. Everybody came, won elections, they were, their names were published. But that floor does not belong to everybody. The principality will choose spokesmen that will communicate his mind effectively and defeat every other argument that exists in the room. I don't want to go in that direction. No. Before you said, hey, this uh, pastor is a politician. No. I'm not talking politics. I'm talking about influence. Influence is different from politics. Because for many of us here, you think that what, what um, the result of elections is a product of census, ballot papers, polling units. That's what they taught you in uh, political science. <laughs> it's deeper than that. It's much deeper than that. Uh, it, 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 it goes to the realm of demons and water spirits. It goes to the realm of appeasing deities. So it's not your ballot paper and your voter card that can change. It's, it's, it's necessary for each and every one of us to be possessed of a voter card. I hope we all have voter cards. No, I'm not joking about that. Do you have? Yes, yes. All right, so I have mine also. We, just like the Bible says, bodily exercise profited little. Voter card profits little. But the game, the real game is played over and above the power of the card. But get your card and have your card, okay? Now, what I'm showing you here is that there is a wisdom. There is a wisdom that can keep a people bound and and that, <laughs> that wisdom is manifest through platforms like that. So if Satan wants to bind a nation, he doesn't visit everybody in that nation. He just goes to the gate of the nation. And what we mean by gate is the place where decisions are taken that are binding on every citizen. It, it, the reason why it is called gate is because of an ancient Hebrew culture. The position where elders in Hebrew culture sit in order to take decisions about what is binding as culture in the city is a gate. That's where, so what we call the Senate or the Parliament today used to sit at the gate. So we call that decision making body elders at the gate. It's because it is what they decide 
that will become our custom, our culture, the allowables and the disallowed. Now, Satan doesn't need to visit every household in order for him to exert control. He visits where? The gate. And what prospers in the gate becomes what will be called acceptable or not acceptable. I don't want to press for that. I would have shown you how human beings may think that their thoughts are independent, but their thoughts are a function of an intelligence that operates higher than their thinking faculty. And as, as intelligent as you think you are, the Bible says every son and daughter of disobedience is under the influence of what the Bible calls the spirit of the power of the air. It's a manipulating influence that operates in the area of the intelligence. And through your commitment to intelligent living, these you find compatibility with this entity. And everyone that has not yet known Jesus, unfortunately, is held sway unknowingly by this intelligence. We see that intelligence projecting itself in the Jewish ruling council. And the objective of the intelligence is that this thing should spread no further. Are you there? Yes. That's how we started, just like you people have started. And I want to say your, your prayers are powerful from what I observe now. I don't know what you guys are doing, but your prayers are powerful. So we, we started the way, the way I'm seeing you operate now. And we had good intentions. The reason for which we were there was to bring discipleship to Christians. And that's why we decided not to operate as a local church. Because what God was calling us to do um, was for the body of Christ. If we build walls around it, we would have uh, operated without adequately discerning the allotment that the Lord has given unto us. So we saw that for the past 30, 35, 40 years, believers in the body of Christ were left without discipleship. I know we have borrowed the word and imported the word into church. We call that word mentoring. Right? If that's what is not biblical. Because you are mentoring somebody to be like you. Is that, is that not so? When you do business, you get someone and then you teach the person the thing that you are doing so that the person can do the things you do. If there's any Nigerian here from Eastern Nigeria, you know what I'm talking about. They have a unique way of passing knowledge. It's through mentoring. Mentoring is not discipleship. Because in discipleship, we are teaching people to be like Jesus, not to be like us. That's the difference between discipleship and mentoring. We are teaching you to know how to relate with Jesus. Because even though I might be a powerful preacher, the fact that I'm a powerful preacher does not exempt you from having to hear from Jesus. Are you still with me? Are you, are you following me? All right, so, so the Lord was calling us into ministry. And because he wanted to bring me into ministry, he put me in, in prison. Not physical prison anyway. He put me in a kind of prison for like 20 years of my life. And I was locked up with the scriptures, with the Bible. I studied it until I started thinking in it and reasoning in it. You, I, I know you don't know what I'm talking about. You have never been in jail by the Holy Ghost before. I have been there and I can tell you what it's like. You will never have a shape if God does not imprison you. You see, when we go around town and we see believers, most of them are shapeless. Yeah. Put them under pressure. You will see they will compromise. He doesn't believe. Put people that serve idols in the north. Put them under pressure. They can't deny their deity. Because they know that that night will be the last night. They, can't, they know the consequence. They will, not, they will not deny the deity that they are serving. But you see, that's a proof that that man has a God. He, the average believer doesn't have a God. He just attends church. You don't have God. No. And I saw that we were so weak that very soon... What our children will grow up to, they'll be bowing down to a God that Apostle Paul cannot identify. So I felt, are you? You are not, you are not following, you are not following me. Are you, are you here? Yes. 
Yeah. So that was a burden that came upon my heart. And, and it was widespread, irrespective of the glorious names of the different de denominations. That ailment was in the body of Christ. And I felt God was raising me as one of the people, not just the only person, but one of the people that will have the assignment to recolonize the body of Christ. And part of the responsibility required that we do not float a denomination. So anyone that is looking for God, eventually will find our voice relevant. You, are you following? I'm trying to also expose you to what we are doing, because maybe you don't know. We are trying to rescue Christianity from failure. That's why he raised us. And so our voice cannot be like the voice of one that is benefiting from manipulating people. You see, if you are manipulating people, there's a way you speak. You don't want to offend them too much because at the end of the day, you still need to raise money. And you appeal to them in strange, intelligent ways to turn their hand, force their hand, to bring out money that they, didn't, they don't intend to bring. So you, there's a way you manage it. it. There's a lot of psychology in it. You need a PhD in psychology to know where to stop, how to, so that you can be manipulating them for 25 years and 30 years until old age. When God raises a personality and sends him as a beacon to the body of Christ, he speaks the counsel of God. And he, he, he doesn't care how you how you process it because his confidence is not in the people he's talking to his confidence is in the person that sent him a lot of pastors in my city visited me and said uh, do you know you are going to be poor you see what you are preaching who will give you money <laughs> and and when they finished making their logic I was afraid actually then I went back to God and said, did, did you hear what those guys said? Those guys are experienced preachers in the land. And the Lord Jesus, that's why he said, no matter how powerful a preacher you have over you, you still need to be trained to hear Jesus. There are things that Jesus will tell you that your pastor cannot tell you. Even if you have a good one. And in fact, the proof that you have a good one is that he prepares you and disciplines you so that your spirit capacity can open up and you could have the, the possibility of interfacing with him. That means you have a good pastor. A good pastor is like a, a, a best man in a wedding. He's not the actor of the wedding. He's just trying to facilitate the groom meeting with the bride. That's what John the Baptist said about Jesus. Because, um, um, are you there? So many people came to him and said, that guy that you validated a few weeks ago, he's now baptizing and all men go to him. I was expecting John the Baptist to behave like an African preacher. Does an African preacher lose his sleep in the night if God begins to raise another person in the body of Christ? He, he, his blood pressure loses balance. He needs to visit a doctor quickly because someone is He needs pills because Pastor Isaac is, is becoming relevant. I was expecting him to behave. I Meanwhile, like most African preachers are like that. So it's our problem as a continent for which we are asking God for mercy. <laughs> he said, Old men go to you. And John the Baptist said, You are not aware of my mission. You've been with me for long, but it's obvious you have not captured the reason for which I'm running. He said, that man must increase. And right now, me, I must increase. Then he gave us a parable. That he that has the bride is the bridegroom. But the friend of the bridegroom rejoices because he heard the bridegroom's voice. So he was speaking up as himself as the friend of the bridegroom, facilitating a wedding between the bridegroom and the bride. And as long as I can hear that the bridegroom is rejoicing on the basis of the meeting with the bride, 
my assignment therefore has been accomplished so the bride must increase in his knowledge of the bridegroom and he must decrease in my knowledge all that i did and all that i am is a mere facilitator that is what it means to be a pastor a preacher we facilitate the meeting of the bride and the bridegroom meanwhile it is are you are you aware that the sanhedrin that is resisting jesus resisting his dealings with men this sanhedrin are you do you are you aware they are preachers yes, sir. their own calling the perception of their calling is that that this thing spread no further then they deployed tactics like threat threatening them which is witchcraft so they use threats as one of the means to achieve their objective and the objective is that they should no longer speak in this name that is spread no further among the people that's the objective Are you there? Are you with me? Then one of the tools that they used, Jesus never used threat as a, as a tool. Because the way of threat is the way of manipulation. Jesus can use rebuke because of foolishness. People are prioritizing things that are mundane and temporary over and above things that are eternal. You will see Jesus will rebuke. There's a difference between rebuke and threat. Yes. Are you following? Yes. The way I'm seeing people, you people like the word. So we will, we will arrange when to study the Bible for one week. When we finish, you will, your eyes will be open. There are some bondages the moment your eyes are open you just walk out of it i need to show you who you are i need to show you so that you'll not be looking for what is not lost that is spread no more among the people this these are preachers they now did what threaten them and they now Ask them never to speak again to any man in this name. So we can now see the objective of the principalities. They are afraid of a name. That's number one. And then they are afraid of people emphasizing the kingdom that operates that name. Satan can sponsor you to preach success. He can make you have a, a Prado. What's the costliest location in Accra? It's, it's legal. He can facilitate a house for you in that in the heart of it's legal. Are you there? So that you can continue preaching that message but the day you preach about the kingdom of god because thy kingdom come thy will be done that jesus said is actually a declaration of war when you say thy kingdom come you are declaring war because you are introducing a new government meanwhile there's a present government on ground oh you are not are you, are you following what the, ah yes there is no way you can say thy kingdom come without conflict Anytime we hold a meeting that is very massive, people are healed, people are delivered. Don't go and sleep, oh. Oh. That it spreads no further among the people. The authority, the authority of darkness that is in the district will locate it. Oh, uh, other man. You are, are you the one? Then they will now look for a way to send a threat. And this threat can come in different ways. Maybe you just begin to experience financial drought. And I'm telling you, I've experienced all of these things. <laughs> Finances are just, no, ah, the graph is no longer okay. <laughs> I 
I remember a mighty evangelist in our nation. He he went to there is a part of Nigeria where the number of witches, the population of witches, is higher than normal people. <laughs> so he went to preach there. And then he now, under the unction, he said, if you are a witch and you want to surrender tonight, raise your hand. So they, they, almost everybody in the, in the crusade ground. And then Satan spoke to him. Satan spoke to him instantly. He said, if you leave me alone, I will leave you alone. If you leave me alone, eh? what did Satan tell him? <laughs> if you leave me alone, what? I will leave you alone. <laughs> and he, he was actually interested in that deal. He say, you will leave me? He say yes. If you just leave me, I'll, I'll leave you. Okay. So the way he was supposed to pray for those witches to deliver them, because Satan proposed that. It will be better for you. To. He now meandered. He didn't, he didn't follow the prayer the way he would have done. Do you realize that when he left that crusade ground to go, his tire punctured. Pow! And the car somehow sorted. So he now, when he survived, he said, so, <laughs> so, you don't know how to keep it. Satan cannot keep a deal. Don't agree with him. So when it comes to threatening you, rise up and become more vicious, more strange. That's how we do it. That is spread no further among the people. Who we'll hold meetings. And then when I come back home, everybody in the house is sick. My wife is sick. Children are sick. People living with us all are sick. Everyone is sick. I say, None of you will take drugs. This sickness is not onto drugs. <laughs> My son said, that said he was sick. I came, I touched him. Touched him. Touched him the third time. He stood up. Became well. I started touching. I feel like that sickness was not medical. It was a threat. Now, the point is, can you identify Satan's threat? Because know the way of the kingdom of God that any time you say thy kingdom of come it is a declaration of war if you are not ready for the war don't say thy kingdom come because the moment you say that get ready. the next thing will be a threat that will come in form of a war Satan doesn't know what you are afraid of so he will test you it will test your finances. It will test your circumstances. It will test your marital life. Then he will see the one that will shake you to your marrow. Then he's going to camp there. He will camp around that one that shook you to your marrow. Are you there? Yes. How many of you still remember that when Jesus went for baptism his father came and accredited him and said you are my beloved son I'm well pleased with you if you are a Bible student you will know that the reason why God created is for his pleasure there is a pleasure that God is hoping to get from his creation and get it so Jesus fulfilled that pleasure and the father acknowledged that in Jesus he was well pleased. Indicative of the fact that Jesus was the idea of what God had in mind when he said, let us make man. You get it? Yes. So that was the first approved man. And that's why any other man that is created upon the face of the earth is expected to eventually become like Jesus. Jesus is a reference point for man. Are you, are you with me? Yes. Alright, so this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Then you will notice the next thing after he was accredited and you know the way God um, addressed Jesus he said I am well pleased. That's like excellent. That's A. 
And in your university, the guys that graduate with A are normally given employment. They are retained. So ah, you have the capacity to continue the legacy of the school. So they give you a lecturing job. Even before your youth service, you know you have a job. But it happens to be that when God found an A, he didn't give him a job. He sent him to the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. He sent him into warfare. Because there is no way you can advance the kingdom of God without warfare. Oh, you're not with me. I wanted to teach you some fundamentals of warfare, how to fight. But most of you are already afraid. They will you are already afraid. You are already afraid. That it spreads no further among what? The people. I've taken record, a very meticulous record of my ministry life. Should I tell you a few things in my diary? Okay. Let me read some out experiences that I had because I went for crusades. I, I just told you one. I came back home one of those times and everybody at home was sick. That means as we go to attack Satan, he looks for a close relative, close person that is close to you that if the person is down, the thing will affect you. And maybe the person is not as strong as you are. So he now channels the attack on the person. That's why if you are a father or a mother of a household here, it is in your interest to raise all your children to become intercessors. You afflict them with prayer until they cannot but become prayer people. Because a, the strongest chain will break at the weakest side. Are you there? You are there. So, one of the experiences I had was that I came back home and then Everybody was sick. Another experience I had is that I came back home and any small thing I do, me and my wife will have a problem. I documented everything. Because the devil does not fight without, he doesn't have strength, as it were, ability, power, brute strength. He has wiles. And one of them is intimidation. So you see, they threatened them that they should not speak in that name to no man anymore. Threatened. Are you there? One of those days I came back home. This is my own personal experience. You know, I'm an open book. If I do something wrong, I will tell you. If I miss it, I will tell you. That is how me I will preach. If you miss it too, I will tell you, you have missed it. You missed it. The only one that is above us all is God. All right? If I miss it, I would say, hey, listen to me. Once upon a time, I... that's me for you. You might have noticed that I'm a corrective teacher. I didn't start correct by correcting people. I started by correcting myself. I preached in a conference day one, day two, and then before day three, God encountered me and said, but you didn't consider this scripture. Did so I went back and said, can you cancel everything I preached for the past two days? Is it possible? They are, they are not accurate. All right. Because if we introduce this scripture and this scripture, you see that what I gave you is half truth. This is actually the position. Yes, I did that for myself. Because I have deliberately exalted the authority of the word of God much more than my credibility, my integrity, and myself. So that God can have mercy on me and keep me right. And also so that he can trust me with more anointing. Are you there? Went for a crusade, came back home. Any small thing will generate crisis. And God began to teach me that this is one of the manifestations of the devil's threat. Are you there? It is only a man that is not keeping record of his spiritual life that will do something great for the kingdom and not 
wait to see where the devil wants to come from. The devil will look for an inroad. The reason is because he doesn't want what you are doing to spread anymore among the people. There was one of those times I came back home and I just noticed that I did not like my wife again. I'm telling you, do you understand? Your pastor is an open book. Me, here. But I didn't tell her. And I now went, do you understand what I'm talking about? I went back to God. I said, how do we solve this one? The reason why I give you examples about my practical life when I preach is because I've had a lot of experiences that I took to God and God solved it. That is the source of your wisdom and that's what you are going to pass on to your children. That I was in this situation before. This is what the Lord taught me. But when you don't have encounters and experiences with God, you will not have anything to pass on to the upcoming generation. You are going to be empty of wisdom because you are not interfacing with God to take you beyond the limits of your human thinking, your human wisdom, and to bring you into his own wisdom. So as I began to pray and pray before God, God now said to me that the cure of this circumstance is to love her with your will, not with your emotion. Will it. I will. And then operate by will. When you begin to paddle your canoe by will, a time will come the waves will support you. That's what he taught me. So I've seen all kinds of manipulation. I've seen But you see, the Sanhedrin said what? That it spreads no further among the people. So when any kingdom thing begins to take place and people are beginning to come into the knowledge of God, they are beginning to be taught how to exercise their spirit and they are beginning to build capacity. Satan knows that if he allows you people in the next five years, ah, uh, you will cause an irreversible problem. Listen to me. Apostolic strongholds like this, they don't grow numerically easy. No. What we count is not number. What we count is the capacity of an individual saint in the room that has been trained. That's what we count. So we don't count number. Because I've seen places where there were 9 million and they could not move, shift the principality that was, was over that place. 9 million, 9 Vichy, 9 million people. And the principality was comfortable. When they finished, it was still ruling. So it means that that 9 million doesn't add to spiritual politics. It doesn't change the spiritual climate. It's a wasted number. But Apostle Paul raised a son called Timothy, one man, and released him into the city of Crete and told him to raise, to appoint elders, as he himself was appointed. It means he was once an elder in one of the outfits that Paul established. And now he had been isolated to do apostolic labors and to follow the ritual the way he saw his master do it. It was one man he left in Crete to colonize the place. So we don't count number. We count capacity. What can you do? What can your prayer do? Can you bring the demon that is haunting your family, been haunting you guys for 20 generations? Can you bring that demon down? Are you there? Yes. Came back from a crusade and I noticed that the financial drought was heavy. So I've seen financial threats, threats, I've seen marital threats, I've seen all kinds of threats. All right. So as, as of today, pastors that have betrayed me are 22. I mean close stabbing is 22. The number now has added up to 22. <laughs> 
Pastor Dame. Have you, how many have you seen? These are threats. And the intention of the principality is that it spreads no further among the people. So how do you survive? When princes are arrayed against you. I need to tell you that the easiest way to secure a promotion in the spirit is to be in the midst of spiritual warfare. The safest place for you to be in spiritual warfare is at the front lines. It facilitates your promotion easily. People that won't fight, eh, they will remain in that state until old age. If you see people growing in the anointing, growing in authority, it's because they are agents of warfare. So we are trying to defeat that wisdom of darkness, which is set up to ensure that the fortunes of Christ in the territory no longer spread among the people. Is that clear? All right. So I need to say a few things about spiritual warfare. And for that, we may need to go to the book of Ephesians chapter 6 just to lay some kind of foundation. Ephesians chapter 6 to lay some kind of foundation. So we'll begin from verse number 10. He said, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the power that is in his might. Be strong in the law. This is counsel. Be strong in the power that is in his might. Why is he asking us to be strong? I would like to define strong. One thing about the Bible is that it's a complete book. It defines its terminologies itself. So if you want to know what a terminology means, don't look for a thesaurus. Look for the Bible. The Bible says that they that do wickedly against the covenant shall he corrupt with flatteries. Daniel chapter 11 verse 32. But the people that do know their God, they shall be strong and they shall do exploits. So spiritual strength is a function of knowing God, not cerebrally, not intellectually, but experientially. And I need to tell you a little about experiential knowledge. When you read in scripture, and Adam knew his wife and she conceived. That's experiential knowledge. That's a kind of knowledge. That's how you can know God. It's experientially, not intellectually. Now, God is spirit. And it happens to be that you are the only creature that God created that can legitimately operate in the spirit realm because of your spirit and legitimately operate in the natural realm because you have a body made of earth. The angels do not have legitimacy to operate in this realm except you create a pathway through prayer. No spirit being has a right to operate here except priesthood provides the allowance. So when you go to the northern region and you see that it's infested with witchcraft power, it's because people have been trained, people have been educated as to what to do to make witchcraft spirits operate within the realm. There is no spiritual presence of darkness that you see that was occasioned by darkness. It was occasioned by a human being that created a pathway for that spirit to come into the realm and so just in case in your family the most predominant presence is darkness it means that there are people that are educated as to what to do to bring darkness into the realm 
Don't look for the spirits. Look for the people. They are human beings. But they have education. Because the Bible says that the people that do know their God, they shall be strong. And the, the Bible didn't say the people that know Jehovah. It said they are God. They are God. So anyone that knows the God of Nogopo is a strong man. And he will do exploits. Well, we're the only ones that are not taught how to do warfare, how to interface with the spirit that supports us. We were not taught. What we are looking for is breakthrough. Go, go to Nogopo. The people that served Satan there, they are not looking for breakthrough. Think about it. We are the only people that are misplaced. We don't even know. A man that knows Satan where well, is satisfied in spiritual knowledge. He doesn't need to go to school for people to bring money to him. People will go to Harvard, go to Oxford and harvest money in pounds and bring to him in the village in Volta. Yes, they'll bring it to Because anywhere spiritual things are active, Financial and material things will come anywhere, whether divine or demonic. So, he, 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 in the eyes of that priest, he, you are wasting your time in the University of Ghana. Yes, he said, you see this? <laughs> so, what is she doing there? Are you there? I have a very powerful friend. He is so good. I don't want to describe him too much so that he will not know he's the one I'm talking about. He was somewhere in the United States, in school. And his mom just woke up in the morning and said, this is my son, won't he come back again? That was all. She went and concocted and sent two spirits to bring his boy back. He was almost graduating. He left school and came back and could never go again till today. Do you know what? His mom is dead. But this guy cannot sit down in one place till today. The person responsible for his journeys has died. The implication of the transaction that was done, the demons are still watching over it to perform it. What the priest in Nogopo is saying is when you have finished University of Ghana, you will discover that your situation will not change because we have locked you at home. Go and improve your brain. Are you there? And so, he gives us insight. He said the only thing have you read your Bible? He said, he that falls in the day of adversity. Why, why, why did he fall? His strength is small. So you, you don't even know your state until there is adversity. Then we can measure your level of strength. This scripture I'm bringing to your knowledge, which is initial preparation for warriors. And the reason why we should be prepared for war is that anyone that says thy kingdom come is already in war so Ephesians begins by telling us that we wrestle he is not telling us that we are about to wrestle he's not telling us that somewhere when you are 55 you will wrestle he said right now it's not obvious but you are involved in the wrestling so in view of the fact that you're involved in the wrestling he says be thou strong in the Lord and be thou strong in the power that is in his might. I'm going to end briefly. Um, tomorrow we are starting a new thing, not this matter. But this is a matter for the night. Now, in the last conference I preached in Nigeria, I tried to open this scripture. Be strong in the Lord. From the Greek rendering, what it means to be strong in the Lord is take advantage of the Lord. Right? Now, when I was much younger, I had a lanky chest. I was not uh, 
muscular at all. But my elder brother has a broad chest. I'm very tall, like a giant. So I cause problems. I cause trouble. When I cause trouble, he want to do something about it. I will involve him. My strength was in him. I was taken advantage. If I, if I meet you on the street and I'm challenging you, it's not because I, I, I believe <laughs> I have the capacity to challenge you. But I will challenge you because I have a strength. I am strong in something. So he's saying here, take advantage of the Lord. If you are going to stand against the devil and win the devil, you, know, you must know what it means to take advantage of the Lord. So when we say you should take advantage of the Lord, we mean a few things. How many of you have read the book of Isaiah chapter 53? He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we were So what Jesus did was that everything he suffered has translated to currency. It can be used for transaction. Just like Bitcoin is, is currency, but it's not money. Mobile money is currency. It is not money. But you can use it for transaction. You can use it to pay for something. Is that true? It's not a legal tender. It's not Ghana's legal tender. Ghana's legal tender is the Ghana CDs. But in the same Ghana, mobile money can be used to buy things, to buy credit, to pay for stuff. You can even translate it to money. Now, so the Bible says he was wounded and his wounds, his sufferings translated to currency. You are not following. He said, with his stripes, ye were healed. And the healing is in the past tense. Ye were healed. The reason why people can be healed is because they were healed. Because the price for their sickness was paid. So in order for you to be strong, you must know how to take advantage of the Lord. You must know the things that the Lord has accomplished on your behalf. Knowing the things that have been accomplished on your behalf puts you in a place of advantage to challenge the devil. The reason is because Jesus is the overcomer. Jesus has already defeated the devil. We don't need to fight a fresh battle. We can all anchor our strengths upon the victory that Jesus has won already. We can anchor our strengths on that. And then our situation will always be victory anytime the devil rises up against us. So our call into spiritual warfare is not a call to fight a fresh battle. It's a, it's a call to maintain the peace. Before we came here today, we passed through the barracks. We saw the barracks at the left. And there was one soldier with a gun. There's, it's not war. Ghana is not at war. But you need to be militant to keep the peace. And if there is something that comes to disturb the peace, we, we fight against it so that peace can be restored. So that's our job. We, we, we mobilize against uprisings so that the state of peace, which is the state of victory that Jesus handed over to us, can be exercised. So in order for you to do this, you will need to be strong in everything that Jesus has already accomplished because those things are registered in the spirit realm as currency and you can use them for transaction to put the devil where he belongs a certain couple They had finished giving birth to 
all the children they want and uh, they didn't want more children and suddenly the wife took it so the daddy of the family now called and said we want to take this child out so we don't need children anymore and it's not as if we're careless we did due diligence to um, use all the prescribed concert contraceptives is that what they call it contraceptives but unfortunately we don't know where this this thing is coming from hallelujah well according to scriptures i know by the covenant of noah you know i told you here that there are five covenants and only one is old and we saw the covenant of noah the covenant of noah guarantees preservation right so according to the covenant of noah life is sacred and life results from something much more than human intelligence or human pleasure are you there it's higher than all of that it's an act of god's commitment to the vision that he has seen among men it's it's beyond us so we know from scripture that they don't have the authority to decide to do you understand that? So scripturally, that's the position. So I have I had a ready-made Bible answer for their request for their question, but I went further to press, and I saw the reason for which the conception happened in the first place. The conception was a miracle. The reason why it was a miracle was because the child has a destiny so mighty. So I prophesied. They kept the baby. When the baby was born, the baby became sick. And the doctor said, This is not 50 50. We know that this child is going to die. They called me again. I say, Pastor, why, why are you suffering this? We came to you. Now, this, we don't need any child. We don't know where this one came from. Now, we want to just remove this child from... And you said that there is a great light on the child. That is why we kept see what we are involved. The man now told me that you see, if the child now dies, that because of what I said, the wife has started liking the child from the womb. If the child, <laughs> if the child now dies, this woman can't manage this thing. Then I went back to prayer and said, Oh great one. I'm in a fix. Then the great one came back in the in the night and said, "The destiny of that child is stronger than death." So the doctors were no longer treating because they had they said there's no need for that. They were no longer using their support systems because they said it's a waste of resources. It was when they removed everything. That the child became normal. Are you there? Because the devil will fight anything that looks that has the potential to challenge his stakes in the territory. He must have peeped and said, Ah, because the devil is a peeping spirit. And what it means to peep, I hope you know the scripture I quoted to come to that conclusion. Isaiah chapter 8. When they shall say unto you, seek unto wizards that peep. Um, okay, let me. Let me give you the scripture. Isaiah 8. Go there. I will end. I will end there.
Isaiah 8 verse 19. And when they shall say unto you, seek unto them that have familiar spirits and unto wizards that peep. So, Satan has the capacity to peep. And what it means, you know, when you're watching a movie, for instance, and I visit your house, and I come to the sitting room, and I see a scene in the movie. Can I tell the whole story of the movie? It was just a scene I saw. So Satan peeps. Satan does not see. He just, he sees a scene. Then he tries to make sense out of the scene he has seen. Most of the time he's wrong. Except you open your mouth to not educate him. You know, when he came into the Garden of Eden and met Eve, he said, did God say you shall not eat of any tree in the garden? That was wrong. That was accurate. That was not accurate. But he was looking, his data bank was limited because he's a peeping spirit. He needed Eve to now support him, to give him full information for him to understand the context of what was happening. If we allow the devil with the information he has alone, he cannot fight you successfully and win. But he needs you to put you in a situation where you start speaking. If you speak too much, then you don't understand warfare. Because one of the secrets God gave Israel when they were to conquer Jericho was to go by the way of an oath of silence. Things can stir you up and you are talking. You have lost. And you will go back and come around that circle again and say you will meet Satan there again. If you talk too much, it means you are not strong. If circumstances and if, if Satan can move through the circumstances and make you lose your anger, if a witch really comes on your case, you will not survive it. You will not. Press me. Press me well. For many years, you will not get the delight you seek. Because I have learned from the Lord there is a time to speak and there is a time silence without you I mean the devil with information his peeping abilities give him limited range of insight so Satan comes with questions did God say what did God tell you what did God do you see, remember in Bethlehem, Ephrata, when the wise men came into the territory, huh? and they, they asked Herod, where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east, and I come to worship him. Herod didn't have the answer to that question. He now called the scribes. He said, you guys are the ones that write the sacred writings. What is the answer to this question? The scribes had the knowledge, because they are the custodians of revelatory powers. They say in Bethlehem, Ephrata. For those it is written by the prophets. You see, it was the scribes that informed the principality of the location that the thing will happen. And from that point, Herod now decreed that they should kill two children, two years and under, that were born. According to the time that he diligently inquired from the wise men. Satan will weaponize every information that you give him and use it to contend with you. How I wish I had time. Many of you will see that you are the one that gave Satan the, the barrel, the double barrel that is using against your life. So if we are kingdom men and we are going to advance the frontiers of the kingdom of God, we must be taught warfare. Oh, that's, that's how I grew. I grew by war. How many of you saw the picture of my vehicle when I was going to London? A tanker, 40,000 liters of petrol, he lost the brake. It was my car he used to support. Meanwhile, in prayer in the night, one of us had seen that there were three graves. And those were the graves of the three people sitting at the back. My wife, 
her PA and my own PA, Philip B, that just got married. Three of them were at the back in my Benz. I was in the front with the driver and they were carrying my daughter at the back and the tanker. Do you know, do you know that when they hit us, where we recorded, okay, they hit us here. We recovered ourselves where that wall is. How we got there, we, we can't account for how we arrived at that place. So, it was when I came, because when they hit, my computer, my laptop bag fell. If it fell there, it means we were there at some point. But where we found ourselves was where that wall was. Then I now understood the vision that there were three graves. So I went and checked the three people at the back. They were, they were intact. I said, okay, how are you? Are you okay? It's all right. Then I now told Satan, you need to do more than this to catch my attention. But that's how I proceeded to the UK. God moved. See, my promotion it comes when Satan at, attempts and he fails. Then they upgrade me. You will remain in this level until you begin to learn the ways of warfare. Most of us, weapon, we give Satan the weapons that he uses to fight us. When they shall say unto you, seek them that have familiar spirits and unto wizards that peep and mutter mutterings and enchantments giving instructions to demons what was the counsel he gave them he said should not the people seek unto their own god should we need to pass from the living to the dead because it's through the instrument of a familiar spirit that necromancy is possible necromancy is the ability to consult the dead through the instrumentality of a familiar spirit that's what is described in the scripture it says should not a people seek their god and in this place he didn't say jehovah he said their god still recommending that you should be strong in the lord first spiritual trick is when you know you are under attack it is a luxury that you cannot afford to lose your temper write it down those of you that easily get angry you, you don't understand it will set you back many light years behind are you there have you written that down? What did I say? Losing your anger is a luxury that you cannot afford during a time of spiritual warfare. Especially for a woman, I don't want to go into details yet. Some, there are women that want to conceive or ladies that want to get married. Anger. If you still trade in anger, you are not ready for a miracle. And I cannot explain tonight. I don't have time. You are trusting God for a breakthrough. And you still have time to be angry. Are you there? Number two. During times of spiritual warfare, you must pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. When you pray in the afternoon, you pray at the tent, you pray in the night. You pray in the afternoon, you pray at the tent, you pray in the night. Pray in the afternoon, you pray at the tent, you pray in the night. Continue like that until the season changes. During a time of spiritual warfare, reduce your eating to the barest minimum. The reason behind fasting, the idea of fasting, is starving your flesh so that you can be more stuffed in your spirit, more sensitive 
in your spirit because you will need directives from God in a situation of warfare for you to escape or for you to do damage to the kingdom of darkness so you need to be in a state that God can reach you even with the slightest whisper how many points did I give you there? In the place of prayer, as you exercise your spirit in prayer, what you are looking for is an inspired word from God. Not just the scriptures. The one God says, speaks into your spirit. An inspired word of God. That will become the sword of the spirit that you use to defeat the, the dragon. Shut down anger. Anger gives Satan an outlet and announces his dominion over your life. So he will have power over a, the season that you need intervention the most. Satan will have power over it. And that's how he, he, he structures delay. That's how he facilitates delay in the life of many people. Those outbursts, that's where you miss it. Those outbursts, that's where you miss it. I said those outbursts, that is where you miss it. Yeah, that's where you miss it. I don't want to go into details. If you can repent, God will bring back the season that you have lost. For I see that you have missed four doors already. Four doors. What you miss because of your anger, what you miss, there are some things you miss. If God doesn't help you, you can get it again. What does it mean to be meek? It means you are not easily offended and you do not easily offend. That is a warrior. That's the state of a warrior. Put him under pressure. He's not offended. Insult him. He doesn't reply. Lie against him, he will not even he doesn't feel there is any need for him to defend himself. Continue with your lie. And if you see a man that can allow you to lie against him and you keep quiet, it means he's deep with God. He's deep. He knows that your lie cannot produce anything that will hinder the purpose of God. It's a sign of depth. But when you see a man that is accused and is everywhere on social media trying to defend himself, he has lost God long ago. What he is is a parrot. I'm going to pray thus in the days to come the Lord will teach your hands to fight and your fingers to walk everything went against me people that were close to me they turned their backs on me it was Satan I knew it I knew that they were good men and I did not take them for their actions to be equivalent to the actions they turned their backs it's on record but I told God that if I'm the only man standing, I will still be standing. Because you didn't talk to them. It was me you appeared to. And I will never deny that. Even if you, they take a gun and put on my head, I will say you appeared to me. Can we pray tonight? We'll continue. Maybe some other time. Then I will show you the things I have seen. I have seen spirits come to my room. They were sent to destroy me. The people that sent the spirits were destroyed. Not once, not twice. Yeah. Can we pray in a moment? Tomorrow we'll begin the conference. The, this is not the subject of the conference, but I, I, I just felt we need to know this, alright? I felt we need to know this. That's a big a great thing that God is going to be doing through us in Ghana. And everyone must become a competent. Sister, come, come. Let me strengthen you. And plead with the Lord on your behalf that the seasons that you have missed He will bring back to you again. Yes, you cannot 
anger is too much you lose too much if you yield to it the lord will bring to you again the things that have been lost can we pray for this my sister and ask the lord have mercy upon her look upon her with your mercy oh the windows that have been shut let them be open again Aiko Salamunda Habreskino Geminae Cobarama Sico Skedomi Abosha Iko Santoria Branta Babose na Caprila Ekaita Bona Isamo Teli Abrosketa Mantos Kisose na Halaita Ika Manzose Eclo Proskito Bantelia Ama Hasia Campes Cuvria la Babonda Abatia Sobina Tele. Lord, let the doors open again. Let the doors open again. Let the doors open again. Let it 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 open again. We are going to take the land that God has given us. I know there are sons and daughters of destiny here. People that God has raised with the hope that you will climb into the height of your calling. Oh my God. Nothing will hold you back. Nothing will resist you. We ask that the Lord will grant us a sensitivity to know when we are at war so that you will not, you will not accuse the wrong person there is a principality trying to take advantage so that they can hinder the advancement of the plans of God. Angulantoria, Igo Selo, Moto, Igo Galibase, Laina Alambo, Scobrigadatoa, Isamo Tetelia, Isamo Cobre, Iscope, La Bara Kutemi, Abras Catania, Ubalanto, Iscope, Gada, Dadikos Cantelli. No! It is Satan. It is Satan. Trying to find a vocation. Trying to destabilize you. Trying to make you lose the grounds that you have gained. We wrestle not against flesh, not against blood, not against princes and powers. We wrestle, we wrestle. Wrestling is a game for the song. It's a game for the song. For the people that don't know their God, their service. Labo Sika Rate Boboria Masantoria Alla la 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 Masaka Riska Beleto Eleni Iacosi Comreda Batania Alla la 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 Masuke Rate Cosa Alai Compano Masale Vieto Cecilia Ica Macata Baboria Ebrosca di Mande Alla la 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 ba sakaya Prata la ba ba seke La ita kude mantala A planta escupele Raka bonda Raka sabatalia Raka sabatala ba bonde A la ito kambre Yata kope na siba la telia Ama kuria ba baratora Yeso salimande La tosi kabala ba sate a bright a compa lame, shemina ito kompeski, la uria bahamele, kovosama, a bratele, a bramakata babolokodia, a subina kadia, a dele bobo. In the name of So when the devil comes and threatens you and you ignore him and you are more radical to advance the kingdom of God he will leave you for a season 
it means his deception did not work. If he notices that you are not yielding to his deception, he will leave you for a time and go, he will enter the lab to develop another weapon with your specification in mind so that the next time when he comes, he will get your attention. If Satan is on your case, it means he has hope that he will prosper. Can you, can you prove to him that he cannot prosper? Can you receive courage from the Lord? Courage from the Lord to stand in faith, to stand in your conviction, in spite of the circumstances, in spite of the situation. Receive courage. Receive courage. Your conviction is true. The things that God has told you is true. Receive courage from the Lord. Receive courage. We will not yield any ground to the devil. We will not yield any ground to the kingdom of darkness. The devil cannot have your daughter. He cannot have your son. He cannot take your husband. You will not profit from us. You cannot gain ground from us. Release your captives in the name of Jesus. says that men will despise a thief if he steals only to satisfy his hunger but when he is caught he shall restore sevenfold and he shall give all the substance of his house 
when he's caught, he shall restore. There is a law of restoration in spiritual warfare. When you catch the thief, you can now demand restore. <laughs> restore. 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 Oh, yeah. Can you demand for restoration right now? You can't take away my joy. You can't take peace away from my family. You can't have my daughter. You can't take my son. You can't take my job. It's not given unto you to rule. 